Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. In the new studio today, we got cameras everywhere, we got cameras there, we got a camera here, we got a camera here, we got a camera up there. I tell you, it took me probably several days to get this whole setup dialed in. And unfortunately, I didn't have my communists here to help me today. So uh, I don't think the lighting is gonna be optimized, but we're gonna do what we can. You know, there's just too much at stake. We gotta get this information out there. So you got your guns, you got your ammo. Well, if you don't have those yet, you're probably screwed because from the sounds of things down there, those things are hard to come by ever since the election went the way it did. Now, it's still up in the air, what's gonna happen about that? But the way things are going, it looks like those things are gonna be hard to come by in the immediate future anyways. And hopefully you got your food, because I've been talking about that all year. But one of the next important things is first aid supplies. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now I'm not gonna do a complete teardown of this uh, first aid kit that you see here, but I'm gonna be talking about some off the beaten path type gear that you're not going to hear about too readily but in my opinion is very essential. So let's just jump into this, shall we? So what we have here is the bug out roll. I'm not gonna talk your ear off about this. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know that this is something I created. Basically it allows you to have all of your gear highly visible. You can hang it up on a tree. You can hang it on the back of your car seat. You can roll it out on the ground. It's with a heavy duty. 600 denier Cordura with really thick, heavy gauge vinyl. This is not the kind of vinyl that you, you find on, you know, something that you buy uh, quilts in or something like that. This is really heavy duty stuff, cold crack resistant, flame resistant, all that stuff. Anyways, uh, that's why I think it's ideal for first aid supplies because you can roll it out. Everything there is visible. You don't even have to label the stuff because you can see it, right? Now you might still wanna label it for somebody who stumbles across this, or if you have somebody else who's assisting you in an emergency, might be nice, but it's basically plain to see. You can point and shoot, right? Just wanted to lay it out here for reference. Uh, one of the things that I will recommend you put in your first aid kit is a headlamp. Because depending on where you are in the world, usually half of the 24 hour period is gonna be in darkness and that's when emergencies tend to happen. So you don't want, you want to be able to have your hands free, especially if you're assisting somebody else. And obviously if you're assisting yourself, you may not even have the luxury of being able to put that on, but at least you have it in there. Okay, you have your CPR uh, resuscitation face shield here on the outside, even though I think it, with the new first aid, I haven't taken first aid in a few years, but I think they're not uh, promoting that anymore. Now I'm gonna put my gloves on so I want to spare you guys my nasty fingernails because it's been a nail biter of a week as you all can imagine with these mutations going on and always good to have some gloves on especially this day and age with all the biological threats out there. Now starting off on the left over here we have our Kytosam hemostatic dressings. Now these are a substitute for what is that stuff called again quick clot and I would recommend these over Quick Clot because they're a lot less messy and they're just gonna be a lot easier to apply. Uh, quick Clot has been something which has been conventionally used to stop you know, bleeding, hemorrhaging, and this is gonna be a substitute for that. You can see on here, there's like 15 different ways to open this thing, so if you're in an emergency, you don't have to worry. Anywhere you, you try to tear it, it's gonna open. And uh, I'll just, I might as well open one for you. This is for science, right? So, okay, there we go. So this is the Keto Sand bandage. This has, I believe it's um, seashells material, Kaido Sand. Has an interesting smell to it. And I'm gonna actually rewrap this because like hell I'm gonna toss this out. Even though it's not gonna be sterile, you know, if we're talking about Mad Max here, guys, if we're talking about shit's hitting the fan, and you're stranded in the middle of the wilderness and you ain't got nothing else, you're gonna tell me you're not gonna use a potentially non-sterile bandage? I mean, come on, I'm not saying do it. Definitely not saying do it. I'm just saying if it's all you got, it's all you got. Kytosan, so it has this uh, seashell uh, type agent in it which clots blood. 
And so if you wrap this around a wound that's bleeding, this is gonna be your first go-to before you bust out the tourniquet. Now, I should advise you here that I am not a medical expert. I'm not an EMT, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm none of those things. I'm just a guy trying to figure it out, all right? And I've done some, I think it was level C first aid. I can't remember which one. It was one where you do the, you know, the Heimlich maneuver and you know, all the basic stuff, okay? I've taken that. But don't take this as medical advice. Uh, Sam Medical has some great videos on how to use this stuff, which anybody can follow and uh, get the gist of it. So definitely go check that out. But yeah, this Kaidosan wound dressing, I would strongly recommend it. And you can get the individual single ply as well. So pick some of that up. You can get most of this stuff at CanadianPreparedness.com. I only stack the best gear, the highest quality gear, because when it comes to first aid supplies. It might seem expensive when you buy it, but when you're using it and when you need it, how expensive it is is gonna be the last thing on your mind. You know, in a time where you're bleeding out, you know, you would pay thousands of dollars for a simple hemostatic wound dressing like that. So the fact that it only costs probably between 10 to 20 bucks or whatever it is, that's not a bad deal. Okay, next we have skin stapler. I've demonstrated this on the channel before, there's the camera there. But for science, I gotta do it again. This kind of sucks, but you know, let's just do it here. See if we can get right under the camera there. Ouch, that hurt. Ouch, that hurt. Ah, that hurt. Okay. It actually, the first one didn't hurt. The next two did hurt. Because I'm gonna be brutally honest, I made this video last night and the video production was crap. So I did it again today and it looks like I put that sucker right on the old <laughs> staple that I put in there. Anyways, we'll leave that in there for a while. This is a good substitute for a suture, okay? But we're also gonna talk about a more non-invasive suture that you can use today. You can, of course, get sutures. I've demonstrated uh, the suture kit on this channel before. You can buy these on amazon.ca and it just gives you a platform to practice your suturing. Now remember, I think you only learn suturing at the level of nurse practitioner beyond, but don't quote me on that. Maybe there's some nurses that do it, but it's a very sophisticated skill. So the only reason why I even introduce something like this is because we're talking about prepping. We're talking about you know what to do when help is never coming. Obviously, in 99.9% .9 of situations, you're never gonna rely on any of this more higher level stuff and you're gonna just go to the ER. But if you can't, that's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about civilization collapsing here or at least a significant chunk of it within a large regional area and you have to fend for yourself. So, uh, I've almost gotten accustomed to the pain of that. You, like I said, usually they don't hurt unless you re-staple over it. Now there is a stapler removal tool, which unfortunately I don't have. So I'm just gonna have to use some mini uh, bolt cutter thingies and that'll get rid of it afterwards but I'll keep it on. I'll look like Frankenstein for the rest of this video. Up next is a chest seal. Now, all of you tactical guys out there, if you own thousands of dollars in firearms, even if you own hundreds of dollars worth of firearms and you got ammo stacked to the roof, then you better be having at least a couple of these because if you have to use one of these, that means it's a really bad day and you're gonna be lucky to get out alive. But you know, for something, I can't remember how much these cost, maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks. I can't remember exactly, but this is something you absolutely need in a tactical medical kit. I mean, without a doubt, like this is something you need to have because if you get hit in an area, if you're whatever your armor fails you, or if you don't have armor, whatever the case might be, this is something which could potentially save your life. It's only gonna get you to a place where you can get help, but it might keep you alive long enough. This one is a combo, so it has an adhesive dressing with the valve, with the one-way valve. So I, I'm not even gonna begin to try to explain it, but I'm gonna post a link to the SAM explainer video in the description section below. We also got the SAM splint. And no, this video is not sponsored by SAM, but it's a company that I work with through CanadianPreparedness.com where we sell level two emergency medical supplies and they just happen to have some of the, the coolest stuff for civilians. So 
Up next is this Israeli medical bandage. These are actually pretty affordable. I think they're around 10 bucks. You can get them in four inch, six inch, and then you can get an eight inch abdominal one. And this is just probably the most practical form of bandage for a large laceration or a burn or, or just a, a nasty wound of whatever sort. So when you take this out of the package, I've already opened this one up. It's actually in another vacuum sealed package within this package. So I took this one, this is the eight inch abdominal version. I took this out of this package and this is what you get. But I've restuffed it in there just for demonstration purposes. So you get two layers of protection. So even if this, even if the vacuum seal on this bag is compromised, it's still vacuum sealed underneath with this plastic material. So the Israeli medical bandage, I'm not sure if I can demonstrate it on here because you kind of need two hands, but basically how it works is you, you put it over a wound, okay, and you fold it around. And uh, it's very easy for me to demonstrate this on a leg. In fact, I'm starting to tear those staples, but okay. So and one thing I like about it is that it has that string there. It's not going to roll onto the ground because you know when you're trying to put these bandages on, if you've ever had to, you know, they're rolling around all over the place and uh, getting all dirty and, you know, getting contaminated. So we have the bandage part here. Actually, you would probably put like your hemostatic gauze on the wound and, but again, you got to go and do your own homework on this. This is very difficult when you're Frankenstein to demonstrate this. And then this is supposed to go through here. Okay. Not sure if you can even see that. It's damn near impossible to demonstrate with one hand. Okay. Anyways, and then you just wrap it around and you keep doing that over and over again, but I will post a video on it. This is probably one of the, the easiest and most uh, common bandages. Uh, it's gotten the name Israeli bandage, but there's actually another name for it. There's a more technical name for it. It's just the emergency bandage. Okay. From Persis medical. And this one has an expiration date of 2027. Well, we are, we all know that expiration dates are there for mostly legal reasons, restock reasons. Um, very seldom, at least in the case of something like that, is it really going to mean much? And this is the abdominal version. So if you had to, if you had a chest wound or a stomach wound, gut wound, whatever. Up next we have silver infused bandages. So these are around 12 bucks, I believe 10 to 12 bucks. And I had to actually use these on my dog uh, when he got his leg injured. I've used them before and they work really well. It's got a waterproof dressing. It's got antimicrobial silver infused in it. And uh, these are available in a couple sizes. I think there's four by four and six by six. And this is, you know, just a bandage that you can put over like after you're done using your, your Kaido sound to stop the bleeding. I mean, obviously at that point you're going to go to the hospital and they're going to give you something, but usually what they give you at the hospital, uh, they're not going to give you this level of stuff typically. So if you had to change it out, but definitely consult with physician if you should be using something like that, but it's uh, certainly not going to do it any harm. I don't think, uh, depending on, I don't know if people can have allergies to silver. I doubt it but maybe you can. Anyways, there's a uh, silver antimicrobial wound gel as well. This stuff works the same way. And what I like about this stuff, and I've had to use it a lot, is it it's works kind of like polysporin in a way, only polysporin will uh, tend to be absorbed into the skin or it uh, dries up or it, it, it wears off. This will actually semi solidify onto the wound. So, it kind of forms a protective barrier from dust and debris and dirt and any other thing which might contaminate the wound. So in addition to having the antimicrobial component, it also protects it and it's non stinging. It's non staining. It's lasts up to three days. So good stuff, a little bit pricey. I think this is around 25 bucks, but definitely well worth it in my opinion. Now this, a tourniquet, tactical tourniquet. This is from the Sam company as well. This is something everybody should have in their first aid kit. And there's a lot of guys, operators, you know, those operators running around in the backwoods talking smack about other YouTubers. Those guys, 
they usually like to put these on the butt stocks of the rifle or on their chest rigs or whatever. Absolutely essential because if you take a bullet or whatever the case might be, you get stabbed, you get shot, whatever the case is, this is probably among the most essential of items to have in a first aid kit as a first responder in particular. If you're doing the whole uh, John Wayne tactical badass thing in the woods, absolutely, because if you get shot, you know, especially if you, you get shot in a, in a limb, obviously that's what this is gonna be for, then you're definitely gonna wanna stop the bleeding. Now there are junctional tourniquets, which are going to be used for places uh, closer to the groin area, closer to the torso, places that you can't stop the bleeding with a tourniquet like this. Those are gonna be very expensive and I would probably only recommend something like this if you have like a large group and you have, a, or maybe even if you have a, a family or if you're that prepper who has everything but you don't have a junctional tourniquet, then this is probably something you would want. Hopefully you never ever have to use things of this nature you know, that's money well wasted, I would say. And the great thing about the SAM tourniquet is it works really simple. So if I had a, if I like say got shot in the arm or something like that, or I was cut and I was bleeding out. So all I would do is I pull on this, then it clicks. So it's almost self directing. So that allows me to get tension to stop the bleeding. And then I can just spin this thing around here Tuck that in there. Oops. Skinny Medic has a great demo of this. To tighten it up, if I need to tighten it up a bit more. And then I can write the time on there so I know, you know how much time the tourniquet has been on for. Uh, the thing with using tourniquets, the one warning is that you can do nerve damage, okay? So this is an excellent thing to have. It's a little abrasive on the skin, but that's to keep it in place. So it's gonna be a little scrapey on the skin, but it's necessary. So yeah, having the knowledge of when you should use a tourniquet is definitely gonna be essential. Now, if you wanna get everything in one package, I'd recommend this bleeding control kit, okay? You don't need to have any sort of medical license to purchase this. Um, you can get them at canadianpreparedness.com. This includes the SAM XT tourniquet. You get medical shears in there. So for cutting open clothing, you get an emergency bandage, the Israeli emergency bandage, or something very similar to that. You get a permanent marker, compressed gauze, and medical gloves, and an instruction card. So everything you need in a vacuum sealed package, and all of the individual components are vacuum sealed as well. The tourniquet doesn't need to be sterile because it's not coming into direct contact with the wound but you probably don't want it to be that dirty. Up next is the zip stitch. I talked about this previously on other videos before, and uh, I've never actually used one, so we're gonna demonstrate it today. Maybe I'll save that to later. But basically what this is, is a non-invasive laceration kit. Okay, so it, what you get in it, you get a zip stitch, you get an alcohol wipe, you get one piece of gauze, and then you get a bandage. So everything you need, to close a wound without having to rely on sutures or staples or anything like that. Now they claim that this is eight times stronger than a suture. So I'm really curious to test that out. We're gonna test it out on our fake skin here, fake rubber skin. Okay, what else do we got? I guess that's, you know, that's the main stuff I got to show you. One more thing I wanna show you here. Another idea I have for you is this fiber fix stuff. I've demonstrated fiber fix it was my first big video that I did probably six years ago. And it was the video that compelled me, hey, maybe I should start making YouTube videos because this video got a lot of attention. Anyways, this stuff, it, it hardens into like a cast. So it's, it's like a roll of tape. It, it's a sticky kind of solution and you wrap it around whatever you want, you know, to fix and it holds it in place and it dries. And this stuff would work excellent for casting. Now, in terms of getting the casting off, you would probably need some stronger scissors or shears or something like that. And again, this is all uh, stuff you would have to do in a pinch if there was no better option. Obviously, you always wanna go to the ER, consult with your physician beforehand, all that, blah, 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 disclaimer. But, fiber fix. You might wanna throw one of those 
in your medical kits and try it out, makeshift cast, why not? Uh, this is an emergency bear flare. Now, I've encountered a problem with selling flares. I have a connection, I, can, I have the flares, I have marine flares, I have all types of flares that I could sell. The problem is shipping the damn things, dangerous goods fees are through the roof. It costs like a hundred bucks to, to ship one of these things that costs maybe 10 to 20 bucks. But if you can, get a bear flare or a high visibility flare. This serves dual functions because not only is it super bright, it's super loud and it's also super hot. So it's a self-defense tool as well, but it's also a great way to get some attention in the short term. Now you may want to put a smaller rolled flare in there because that's gonna last a lot longer. This only burns for a minute, but boy does it burn. Let me tell you, yeah, you could fight a bear with that easily. Now, I got some finger splints in there. Uh, I also keep some basic uh, survival supplies within, a, within my first aid kit. Not a whole lot, but just enough. So for instance, I carry this emergency blanket in there. Just a small SOL emergency blanket. Any emergency blanket will suffice. There are some matches in here. There is a air horn. Let me just demonstrate that. So if you need to get attention and you don't wanna be relying on a whistle, then you can just screw this on here. Most of you guys know how an air horn works. God, this is gonna be loud. My ears are gonna be blown, looking like Frankenstein. Just like that. Wow. Okay, I got some water treatment tablets, some reflective tape. So, you know, if you're at a scene of an emergency and you're trying to get somebody's attention, I also have this thing here. And this is a disposable heat mini blanket. So you can buy those, you know, those hand warmers that contain the iron oxide or whatever it is and the various chemicals that, that heat up when you shake them up. The same thing happens with this, only it's a lot bigger. And I actually had one that was huge and it's kind of for the purpose of keeping somebody warm in, you know, winter emergency. Because in Canada, at least, you gotta remember, if you're outside, half of your emergencies are gonna be in cold conditions, okay? So, you know, it's good to have something to keep people warm and sometimes an emergency blanket itself won't cut it. So having that capability to heat is good. These do have a finite shelf life. I believe this one expired years ago, 2016, but I guarantee you it'll probably still work. Uh, also have a magnifying glass uh, in there, Fresnel lens for inspecting a wound if necessary. Uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> that's just something I thought of. Uh, a mirror and a notepad, but also of course it doubles to start fires. Uh, I don't think things will get that bad in one of these situations, but you never know. So what else do we got? We got our compass and our whistle and all that blah, blah, blah. Irrigation tools, whatever you can get your hands on. I mean, I got some lidocaine, which is a local anesthetic. That's the stuff that they freeze your wounds with if you're getting sutures or if you're going to the dentist. Uh, it's hard stuff to come by and I'm not sure if it's legal, but if you can get some, get it. I also have an expired EpiPen in there. I'm not really sure about that. I know that the US military did some research with the FDA on expiration dates, what I've talked about that on this channel before, where they determined that uh, many medications, including EpiPens, will last longer than the expiration dates, but you'll wanna look into that anyways. I just keep it in there because those things are hard to come by, and uh, I think you can only have a certain amount on you at once. So, you know, if you know somebody who has allergies and they have the potential to be anaphylactic, then you definitely need to be considering something like that. Lots of different types of tape, including duct tape. Underneath this silver bandage, we have a lot of other bandages. We have our moleskin and our blister medic. Those are kind of luxury first aid items. Really, a band-aid will do, but if you can get your glacial burn gel, your blister medic, your moleskin, those things will make life a bit easier if you're out there. Wilderness first aid guide here. One of the best books that you can get is the, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I'm gonna post the the link on screen here. It's Dr. Joe and Amy Alton's book about survival medicine when help is not coming. That's a book that every prepper needs for first aid in their preparedness library. Now, I've got some biohazard bags, some gloves, some face shields, that kind of thing, okay? 
triangular bandages, some over-the-counter medications, also got some fish mocks in there, I can't talk about that or the video will be demonetized. Got some HIBA cleanse, uh, this will, they use this in hospitals to pre-wash your hands and it's supposed to inactivate viruses and bacteria on your hands for several hours after use. Uh, what else, we got some of that uh, new skin stuff, cleaning agents, things of that nature, then we got gauze at the bottom there. So that's basically what I have to share with you today. There's a whole lot of great information online about building a first aid kit. And I would strongly recommend that you put a lot of attention towards this because most people, they got the food, they got the guns. But I mean, if you got all these guns and all this ammunition and you think you're not gonna suffer at least one retaliatory shot or casualty, then I think you might be just a little bit overconfident and you might wanna hedge your bets with building out a nice solid first aid kit. Now, the bug out roll is something I personally use. I personally like it, it works for me, but there's many other larger kits. There's wheeled kits, you can buy Pelican cases for that particular purpose. Uh, we do sell Pelican cases at CanadianPreparedness.com, but I don't have the medical cases, but it's certainly something I can get you on special order. If you want any of this stuff, uh, use coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER while it's in stock. And uh, yeah, and if you're somebody who doesn't wanna be burdened with all this, you can always get yourself a pre-made medical kit. This one's from Adventure Medical Kits. And they include, you know, quite a few things, but you're not gonna, lots of this special stuff, you're not gonna get in there. So I don't even think there's a tourniquet in here, but there's a lot of your, your basic everyday stuff, you know, for your lower level emergencies, but no, no trauma stuff. Yeah, anyways, check out the Adventure Medical Kits. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. If anything, get something like this, throw it in the car, throw it in your bug out bag, in your closet, and hopefully you never have to use it. But if you do, it's there. So this roll will actually, it rolls up, okay? And then it locks into place. I'll show you a video over top. But uh, let's uh, test out this zip stitch, shall we? Okay, so we're gonna try out the zip stitch. So this is what we get in the zip stitch package here. So when you open it up, you get your zip stitch, get your instruction guide, very easy to follow instructions. And this is vacuum sealed, so that's nice. You get your gauze, and then you get your Band-Aid to go on top of it and your alcohol prep pad. So definitely gonna wanna use the alcohol, I'm imagining, because it's gonna be something that you wanna, if you want strong adherence to the skin, you're gonna wanna use this. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to stick to rubber. This is made to stick to skin. So if it doesn't stick too well on here, uh, that's not you know necessarily the end of the world, right? This is just uh, for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna clean the area with alcohol, so we get strong adhesion. You are limited in terms of the size of the zip stitch. It's only available in one size right now. So first we gotta remove this clear liner, just like that. And then we gotta center this on the wound, which is gonna be irregular here. It's just the way this thing is laid out. Actually, let's maybe, let's try to put it on here and see if we can kind of close this gap here. Hopefully this works, because it's the only one I got for demo purposes. <laughs> uh, obviously you wouldn't be pressing it on the wound that hard if you had a wound, and there's a slight tear in there. And so we're just gonna go around like that. And remember, this is made to attach to skin, not rubbery plastic stuff, okay? Now the goal is to pull these things closed and it looks like yeah just like as I thought that's a pretty large gap so you know I'm getting pretty ambitious trying to close this gap but you could see how it would work anyways so the idea would be that you would close the gap like that so sorry it's not a great demonstration guys I could bust out my medical scissors but we're just going to use the Leatherman here and then after that you would cut these just like that Cut these off. Try not to cut the person or yourself. I can tell you that putting that on my skin, it is very sticky. 
Like it's very adhesive. So I don't know what sort of uh, glues they're using on there to adhere to skin, but it is definitely very adhesive. And I think had I not, you know, worn it out on here first, it would have been a lot more adhesive than that. So that's pretty cool anyways. So anyways, you might wanna throw a zip stitch in your kit. Now I also have real sutures in here. Again, depending on the country that you come from, it, there might be different legal limitations on the type of medical gear you can get, but you might as well get some real sutures if you can. Maybe you're in the presence of a doctor or somebody who knows how to use it, okay? Anyways, guys, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, and uh, feel free to let me know if you have any recommendations for other first aid supplies, even stuff that you would like me to review on the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe out there and get ready because it's going to be a long, long winter. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.